Hello, in this geometry, let's look at a four-line geometry, a finite geometry. In the three-point geometry from the previous video, uh, the existence postulate guaranteed the existence of some points, specifically three. In the following four-line geometry, the existence postulate guarantees the existence of lines. Therefore, when we start to build our model, we'll start with lines this time instead of points. And here I'm going to use a paragraph form of proof of the propositions. So we just have the three postulates for this four-line geometry. Again, this is a pretty simple uh, geometry. Postulate one, there exists exactly four distinct lines. Postulate two, each pair of distinct lines intersects in exactly one point. And postulate three, each point is on exactly two lines. So maybe we should think about these uh, postulates two and three in if-then form. Postulate two, each pair of distinct lines intersects in exactly one point. Another way to say that is um, if uh, L and M are lines, then the intersection of L and M has size one. It's exactly one point on both of them. But notice you have to have two lines to apply that. Postulate three says each point is on exactly two lines. This says if A is a point, there exists exactly two lines containing A. So here we start with what the point, we get some lines. But postulate ones is flat out existence postulate, there exists exactly four distinct lines. So the first proposition is there exists exactly six points. And here's the proof. Uh, again, I use a paragraph form here. Postulate one states that there are exactly four distinct lines. Therefore, there are four choose two, that is six pairs of lines. It's just a counting thing. By postulate two, each of these six pairs of lines contains exactly one point of intersection. So this is six points. Now we need to show that they're distinct and they're the only ones. So that none of these can be, so this construct this can, gives us potentially six points. We need to make sure that those six points are all different from each other. That's what's meant by distinct. And that they are the only points in the geometry. There's not some other point. All right, so we know there are no other points because postulate three guarantees that each point is on at least two distinct lines, forcing each point to be one of these six. And to show that these points are distinct, suppose that there, two of these six points are the same. This would imply that this point is on at least three distinct lines. But this contradicts postulate three, which established that each point is on at most two distinct lines. Therefore, we've shown there are at least six distinct points. Okay, and we already established earlier that there is exactly six points. So, there are exactly six points. Okay, now let's look at the next theorem proper, or proposition. Okay, each line consists of exactly three points. Here's the proof. By postulate two, each line of the geometry has exactly one point in common with each of the other three lines, giving at least three points on each line. These are distinct as shown in the proof of proposition one. Now suppose the line contains a fourth point. By postulate three, it's on exactly two lines. However, this is a contradiction since by postulate one, there are only four lines. And we've already accounted for all of the points generated by intersecting the other lines with this line. Thus, there are exactly three points on each line. Now this is enough to build a model. Here's a model here. There were six points, so let's just call them A, B, C, D, E, and F. The lines, there are four of them, and they're sets of three points. So let's do the sets of three points here. The only way you can make sets of three points, A, B, and C. Uh, I'm sorry, not the only way you can make sets of three points, but here's one way to make it work. A, B, and C, B, D, and F, C, E, and F, and A, D, and E. There are other sets of three points, but they would not be lines. 
and there's the illustration. Remember, the model is over here. It's the set of points and the set of lines. And let me go ahead and make that explicit. This is a set of points and a set of lines. And then over here is the illustration. Okay. Uh, now, this may suggest other theorems that we might prove. The illustration and the model, either one or both, uh, is a good reference point. It may suggest other things, other propositions or theorems. But we have to be cautious not to assume that the model is the categorical model or the only description of the geometry. So you can't be, look at the model and say, oh, well, look here at the model. This is true in the model, therefore it's true. No, we can't do that. So we can't reference the model as a reason for any step proving a result about this geometry. So your proofs, while perhaps inspired by the model or its illustration, must be independent of the model. So, for example, when we look at the model, we see that there are some points that aren't on a line together. Um, this would be uh, not true in Euclidean geometry, right? Euclidean geometry has a posh that says, that says, given any two points, there is exactly one line containing them. Well, that's not true in this geometry. For example, points C and D do not have any line containing them, both. That would be a non-collinear set, just C and D. Okay, so let's see if we can do something about that as a proposition. Well, it looks like we have a set of two distinct, of two lines, um, contains five points, and there exists uh, three pairs of points that are not on the same line. So by proposition two, each line consists of three points. Therefore, two lines could potentially generate up to six points. However, by postulate two, each pair of lines intersects in exactly one point, so that so two intersecting lines consist of five distinct points with exactly one point in common to both lines, and that establishes part A. Call the intersection of two lines L and M point A. By proposition one, there are six points in the geometry, leaving only one point not on the chosen lines. Call this point F. We claim that there is no line containing both A and F. Suppose that there is a line containing both A and F. By our construction, this is a line distinct from the first two lines that contains A, but now A is on at least three distinct lines, and that contradicts postulate three. Thus, there is no line containing both A and F. Since A was chosen arbitrarily, we can repeat this procedure for any of the six points, producing three pair of non-collinear points and that establishes part B. Uh, looking at our picture, um, let's see here. If we look at the, whoops. If we look at the picture, we can see that A and F are not on the same line, E and B are not on the same line, and D and C are not on the same line. So there's a um, maybe a little bit interesting geometry with exactly, uh, uh, turns out to have exactly four lines and six points. In the next video, I think I'm ready, for, we'll start with a, a geometry that starts with four points instead of four lines and see what happens with it.